I got very moved because I have family members, friends that fight against this cancer. Some of them are okay, some of them not. If we can help to provide tools to find appropriate treatments and medicine, so the battle will be easier. Welcome to Latinx in Power, a podcast that will share stories of amazing Latinx leaders. Hosted by Thaisa Fernandez, a proud Latina in tech, program, and product manager living in Silicon Valley and sharing her experiences. I'm so honored to have Alma Lopez today. Welcome to Latinx in Power. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. We met at a Latina Zin Tech event, and we were part of the same panel at Electronic Arts, where we both talked about our career in product. Alma studied computer engineering, and she also has a master's in science in data science. Alma is a Latinx in power because she's a successful product owner at Hosh. She works with cross-functional teams in a cloud-based solution designed to help in the research and development of drugs to fight cancer with the use of machine learning. In the past, she also worked as a software design expert and as a consultant. In this episode, we are going to talk more about how machine learning and cloud-based solutions can be a huge help in the fight against cancer. We are also learning more about Alma's journey coming from Mexico as a computer engineer and transitioning her career to product owner. What does it mean to you to be a Latina? It means to be proud and it's a huge responsibility because we represent a culture based on strong family values. We have a long history. And for that reason, we are responsible to keep that alive. We can start with the language. So it's funny, you, you pay more attention when you, in your case, Portuguese, in my case, Spanish, to speak properly because you represent that uh, culture. Cooking, you make sure you know the, the dishes, how to cook as your grandmother does. Sharing all the Mexican traditions with family, friends, even my coworkers. So being Latina also allows me to be passionate. You know, Latina, we are very famous to be passionate everywhere. At work, uh, we love people, we welcome people, we are happy, we love the community. So we are kind of always known as a positive attitude. And as a mother, also I teach my kids to love two countries. The one that they, they are born and the one that they have blood. And what I like it here especially is I'm a Latina who choose another place to live. So that also take it as a power. Mm -hmm. So I, I have two homes, one that was born and raised and the other one that's the one that I choose to live and raise in this case, my family. So, but Mexico is always has a big part of my heart. I feel the same way. I think I learned how to love those two countries. And of course, I started to listen to more Brazilian music and cook more at home because it's also a way that I feel connected to my country, my family and my friends. Yes, it's, it's, you see the, you see your world in a dif with different eyes. Even when you go back, you are more, in the case Brazilian, in my case more Mexican, you feel prouder. Mm -hmm. And and yes, it's, it's a big difference. So being here in the Silicon Valley, be Latina, It's also very important. And, and I don't know, for me, it's, as I mentioned, it's proud. I think that's the, the best word that describes for me, to be proud. How was your journey abroad? This is a nice story. So I was, uh, I, I was raised and studied in Mexico. I had a good job in Mexico. But one of my dreams was being in technology, a computer engineer. It was to work in Silicon Valley. In that time, I'm talking about 1997, Uh, they sent me for training to San Jose, California. And I was, wow, oh, here is, you know, when you drive and, and you see all the companies in that time, it was Sony and Yahoo started in that time, Northern Network, Cisco. And I was, wow, that's nice, that's cool. Imagine working here. So I went back, I put that token on my, on my back. And one of my best friends from school fell in love, followed the girl, and he ended up living here in, in, in the Bay Area. He was working for Silicon Graphics. So I came to visit, to another training. I saw him and he was 
Alma, you should come, come on. It was in the bubble of the 97, 98, on the, the big bubble here. And I was saying, you know what? Yes, let me try. So I checked a few companies. Two of them bring me for interviews from Mexico. I did the interviews. I got the offer letters. I accept one and took nine months for my approval of the visa. So that was my first baby. Nine months. Every month, uh, the, yeah, the manager in that company was, it was a small consultant company. Okay, no news, but that means it's good news. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. And every month, finally, when he decided, okay, yes, we got the paperwork. You were able to come. So I had to give my notice in my previous job in Mexico. I'm planning to move here. My friend was here, right? Mm-hmm. But news, he was leaving uh, the girlfriend at that time, now the wife. She's from Norway. They moved to Norway. And he was following him. He was in love. He followed him here. And he followed her in, in Norway. And I was like, what? I don't have friends. I don't have family. What do you mean? And he but you have a job. <laughs> and I was you know what? Yeah. It was kind of everything. And you wait for nine months. So I moved here with no friends, no family. Arriving on August 1st, 1989 with two big suitcases. That's all. And and just a job. And that was good. So I started working. It was so easy for me. It was totally different. I think your work is super interesting. You work helping to fight cancer. This is amazing. And what is your favorite thing about your career? It's to be able to contribute with my technical skills and experience in the fight against cancer. I got very moved because I have family members, friends that fight against this cancer. Some of them are okay, some of them not. So if we can help to provide tools to find appropriate treatments and medicine, so the battle will be easier. Uh, tools to help researchers to make decisions in the development of drugs, and we can help patients in that way. So my team and I are working to contribute in this field. I also enjoy to work in Silicon Valley, where you had the opportunity to work with people from many other cultures, Asia, Europe, Latin America, and U.S. So that makes a unique way you're looking um, to solve a problem. In this case, how we're going to you know, attack this this problem to make the best solution. And we had different perspectives. So it's, it's unique when you have a multicultural team with different experiences, with different backgrounds, with different, uh, but something that we have in common, we have that sense that we are helping, that mm-hmm. we are making the lives easier for somebody, somebody that we might love, or somebody that is the loved one, or my friend, or my, I don't know. It's it's very tempting every time that I talk to one of my colleagues. Any, there is always somebody who knows knows somebody else who is fighting this this battle. So that makes us a big purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine that working with uh, such a challenging thing like cancer, it's so, so important to have a team with different cultures, with different point of views to trying to find a, a solution to something that is so serious and affect the lives of many people around the world. And what does a product owner does? What are your main responsibilities as a product owner? I work with cross-functional teams. That means I work with engineers, with data science, project managers, stakeholders, usability experts, designers, testers, and product managers. So we create a software application in this case. Um, I'm considering myself the bridge between the business requirements and the development team. My main purpose is to help my developers to understand the business need. So hey, we need to make this happen, how we can make it happen. So my technical background allow me to understand the possible solutions um, so I had direct communication as well with the stakeholders, with product managers, to make sure that we are implementing what they have in mind, what they create as a roadmap, and also based on the priority, because they had the direct uh, communications with the end user, we can say the doctor or the researcher or the patient in this case. So 
I get the, the, the idea of what is the business requirement, what is the value, and I come with my team mm -hmm. and explain it, and we try to make a solution. I'm in charge to explain that and also to make to monitor that everything is implemented on time, on budget, as a priority. Basically, I like to be able sometimes to talk the language, even though I don't need to code, uh -huh. but understanding why one thing could be difficult, what could be easier, and at the same time allows me to challenge them uh, to get better and quicker results. What is the difference between the role of a product manager and a product owner? This is a very, very interesting question because I think all depends on the, the companies. Some people call it product managers, some other people call it program managers, some other technical product managers, product owners. Basically, the main difference is product manager is a person who defines the roadmap of the product, has the direct communication with the users and stakeholders. They are in charge of the responsibility to get the money to fund the product. Uh, a product owner, this term comes from the agile methodology and is the person who is responsible for the backlog that is created with all the priorities of the requirements that the product manager wants and make sure the requirements are implemented based on priority. I have access to stakeholders. I can explain to them, but uh, I always try to verify that we are doing properly work with my product manager mm -hmm. because he's the one who has more wider view, better idea about checking with all the end users that we're doing the proper product. I'm totally responsible to communicate this to the development team. Uh, and work with them every single day. That's another difference. I work with them every single day. I'm kind of part of the development team um, and I can see the impact on the implementation and help to look for a solution. If we have a blocking issue, I'm the first one to go and, and communicate this to my product manager to, okay, we cannot do this because we have dependency on this other team, but instead we can swap it with this other uh, requirement. And so the developers can continue working and we utilize the budget. So that's my my primary. So I'm, I'm between, I have one foot with development, another foot with business. Uh, it's very challenging, but also very rewarding. When we, we had the software working, it's, it's really good. And I, I imagine your technical background should also help a lot during this process, not just like understanding the technical requirements, but also uh, the business side of what you work and all the cross-functional teams, different stakeholders and all the fun stuff. Yes, you, you have always new things. Every single week you learn something new. <laughs> and when you had experience to work with, the, sometimes the, I work in my case with pathologists. And even though you don't, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pathologist, I, I don't really study in deep biology. But sometimes you have to learn some, you know, on that field to be able to understand them as well. So it keeps you interested. Always you learn something new. Really cool. And what advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career in tech? There are so many fields, so many applications, so many industries that you can do in tech. So my suggestion is start early. Go and you have an opportunity to join to networking company or go to join to a bank, a financial institution, or go to join to a healthcare, uh, go and do it because that's going to allow you to experience the different fields. And what you, you don't know, if you are, if you like it, if you don't try it. Right now, I have, you know, so many years in, already on the industry, but I have colleagues that are dedicated as a manage, they manage IT projects, Others are architects in very complex networks implementations. I had developer managers, IT managers, data scientists, games and developers. So there are so many applications that they can work on technology. So my base suggestion is just get there, get involved, try it. You don't like it, look for the next opportunity. Technology is everywhere. Be curious. When you feel you're making the difference, uh, and so uh, believe me, you will feel that the salary is, is not important. This is kind of uh, as a consequence, but you're having fun and you enjoy it. That's, that's what you, you're going to continue working, but you don't know if you don't experience it. Mm -hmm. It took me a long to get what I, where I am 
I enjoy my previous experience and everything that I learned before is helping me a lot in what I'm doing right now. So it's always it's always help it's always useful any experience that you can get any other place. Mm-hmm. You're in tech, get ready to continue learning every time because technology is changing. It's changing so fast and, and it's impossible to be expert in every in everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the reason you have if you decided to go like uh, okay on, on the data okay data science path or on handle databases okay maybe database administrator oh I love telecommunications networking okay here but there's so many places that you can work on technology uh, and the good part is the pay is good yeah. so it's, it's a good place to be like uh, right now in the pandemic was was a, a place that or a role that really wasn't impacted when you continue working. As soon as you have internet connection and a computer, you can continue working. Yeah, and at the same time, I feel that if the person doesn't have uh, the opportunity to transition right away, even in the company they already work or like move to another company, they can also start their own project that is related to technology, work in their own pace, their own time and build a product just to try out, test and learn. And I think it's also a great opportunity, uh, not just to learn, but to showcase to other people what you really want to do and the cool things you're building. Everybody has the skills, everybody. Like uh, I'm not considering myself, I was pretty shy at the beginning when I was starting working. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had to develop, to talk to people, to be good on presentations. It, it, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. But if you give me a poem and start coding, I'm faster on that. I'm kind of dedicated. I can do it. No problem. Mm-hmm. And people that vice versa. So they, ha- they have to dedicate more time on coding. And, but they are very easy people going. Uh, and I think it's just take advantage of your skills. And also the ones that you think you are not so good, you have room for improvement. Do mm-hmm. it. Take training, coaching, uh, and also, as I mentioned, do it. Don't do it. think about it. Uh, especially for us, the language, I totally relate with that. When you write to these countries, oh my God, they won't understand me. So mm-hmm. you keep quiet. You don't ask questions. But suddenly it's like, you know, I'm going to do it. I need to practice. I have to do it. Don't don't be afraid of that. Go and do it. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the model here. You make it good. If not, well, it was a lesson. So let's continue. Exactly. This is a great point. We don't learn if we don't do it. And I also like this idea of getting 1% better every day. I think the consistency is also something super important. And what really makes you excited? Something that really, really makes me excited is the feeling of accomplishment. Is when you, I remember as a kid, uh, my mom and your parents have some expectation of you and you accomplish it, that feeling that they're proud of you, they're happy because you did it, you reached the goal, is good. So I relate this as a mother, as a daughter, as a wife, as a product owner, engineer. Something that I, I realize I do, I love to plan. Mm-hmm. Even when we go for vacations, I plan. <laughs> okay, let's do. I'm not so planning on detail. But I like to have an idea. Believe me, I'm not the one that's going to, oh, yeah, let's go to Disneyland right now. Let's go. No. I had to have a few days. Just Okay, we're going to go. This is the hotel. At least we're planning to stop here. We're planning to come back on this day. So I like to plan. Mm-hmm. But when I fulfill the plan, when I finish my little project, even cleaning the house, um, I feel so good. This that feeling of accomplishment exact me to start the project, exact me to start the plan. It, it, for me, it's, it's made my world uh, better and uh, with the people around me to feel in better. Mm-hmm. Even, believe me, I, I, I don't think there is somebody who really enjoy cleaning the house, mm-hmm. but I see that, okay, I don't like to clean it, but this is the reward. I'm going to have a nice house. I'm going to, you know, start watching my favorite series and everything is going to smell clean. So that just feeling, the accomplishment moved me. So, mm-hmm. and, and I apply it also to the work. Okay, this is going to happen. I know I'm going to reach this goal or this milestone. I, I just keep my eye on the, on the final thing. And when I reach it, I enjoy it. I mm-hmm. really, really enjoy it. Tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear these phrases. The first one is, 
a song for a karaoke night. Timbiriche. And this is a band on the 80s, 90s in Mexico that I grew up with their songs in several stages in my life. So literally we grew up together. So I know all the songs and I can really sing it with feeling. So <laughs> yeah, in the Spanish, but Mexican people will relate on that. And your superpower? Multitasking. That's very useful in motherhood. But, you know, I, and I think it's something like the women have, men know, but you can watch dishes and, and watch TV, right? You can listen to your favorite song and still kind of think on the solution of a problem. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, feed the baby and still listening what's going on and going to prepare for dinner that night. So, yes, it's, it's multitasking. And I think I'm kind of decent good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that would be my superpower. I, I love to listen to podcasts while I'm cooking. Good tip. <laughs> And a book. Only one? Only one. Okay, this one. You are a badass. This book, I was, I read it like maybe three, four years ago. I was talking to my sister, my little sister last week on that book that she mm-hmm. hadn't had the opportunity to read it. Now you have to read it. It's a book that every single chapter is empower women. Mm-hmm. Like be grateful. Mm-hmm. Love yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, 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 even though you say, yeah. And as I mentioned, no, everybody has all the nice skills you need to develop. But the one that you have and you have to do is be good to yourself. Mm-hmm. Love yourself. Take time for you. So I like that that book that every single chapter, I remember every single chapter closed on. Love yourself. And, and, you know, you finish it. Love yourself. But it's, it's a mantra. It's a good thing that you that you learn. So I really like it. And it's very empowering for women. It's from Jen Sincero, right? I think yes. it's... Yeah, I read this book. Really cool. And what is the last skill you learned? Meditation. Even though I've been doing this for years, you know, kind of, oh yeah, I meditate. But I, I can say until the last five months, I really feel that I'm in a meditation mode. Mm-hmm. Before... You got like at one minute and you start thinking, oh, I had to do this, I had to do that. Oh, okay, no, 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 go back to silent. Oh, you had to. So it was really hard with mantras. It, it was, I try, I try, I try. But in the last five months, this is the only skill that really keep me, keep me in my good mood because having kids, with no going outside, with no summer camps, it, it, was, it was crazy in this house. Mm-hmm. So the meditation, it was the only me time, quiet mm-hmm. time that allowed me and this time I was able to I was wow oh my god I did 15 minutes I felt like, I felt like a two and I was quiet I cannot say I master it but I can say I really meditate now mm-hmm. so and I try to do it every single day it's, it's good for my for me it calm me down mm-hmm. it, it bring me some I don't know some even joy because I know I love myself when I do this and what motivates you to work hard uh, my family Those are the ones who encourage me every single time to do my best. In my early years in the school, in activities that I get interested, they always were happy and supported. Uh, when I was taking photography classes or martial arts or interested in computers, my dad was the first one who, I, in that time, in the 80s, I spent a lot of money to buy me a computer. And, and I was, oh, thank you. Uh, so I was able to do my homework and everything at home. It was, I was so lucky. Uh, nowadays, my husband, my kids are my big cheerleaders. So it's, it's, it's nice to be supported to do mm-hmm. personal gro- growth. Uh, I went back to school three years ago to do the master's. And, you know, kind of, I'm too old for that. Come on. And my kid was, no, mom, come on. And I love it. And my kid was encouraging. We, we were like doing homework together. He, he and his desk, me and my desk. And, and when we was the graduation, I was lucky to graduate in 2019, no, this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was able to go and walk, go to the call ceremony. And my kids were there. I, I never forget their eyes and, and their proudness as a kid. Oh, my mom is there walking. So... That's what it motivates me to do my best. And what that moves me all the time. That's even when you're sick and you, oh my God, I don't want to get up from the bed. But they are the ones who give me energy and, and make do better, better job, better work all the time. 
Amazing. I'm sure they are be really proud of you. How do you continue to learn in order to stay on top of things within your role? I think it could be from basic things like uh, reading articles, be on top of what is going on in technology, check videos regarding a new topic. And now when we have all this internet access to all the material, you know, research papers, books, training material, um, as an expert in the field, believe me, researchers, they love to talk about their job. They are so ask about it. Um, in my company, check your company where you are, they, they offer professional growth to develop the hard and soft skills and, and continue to learn it all the time. Even for the, just talk to people. I think that that's, you would be amazed on all, all what they do um, and how much you can learn and see the, the world in a different way. I read a quote not a long time ago that really resonates with me. It's from Patrick Collison. Basically, Patrick said that you could pound yourself in your head against the wall and think about original ways to solve a problem or do things. And you can also cheat by reading books. And I think that was amazing. I love that quote. Yes, and all kind of books, right? It's, it's, for me, I, I always explain to my kids, my kids are no, are not so good readers. They are sports people. But so I tell them, hey, it's open your, your, your mind to, different, to a different world. If it's, you know, adventure book, if science fiction, or if, Even mathematics, algebra, it's opening your mind to a mm -hmm. different world. And, and little by little, I'm trying to convince them. But yeah, it's, it's hard for a kid who loves sports to sit down and still to read a book. And negotiation skills are definitely something extremely important in your profession. Do you have any tips to someone who is struggling or want to improve their negotiation skills? I think this communication. Communication is the one that you need to make a negotiation. Verbal and writing communication are so important to be able to listen and take the time to understand. Because when you're talking to somebody to negotiate and but you don't understand what they want to tell you, what they're trying to communicate to you, it's going to be hard. When you have the time to listen and you go, oh, okay, now you understand your point of view. Let me see it in the eyes that you see in it. And this is my proposal. Be analytic, analyze the situation. And what it works for me is always when I try to sell an idea, I always bring my plan A and my plan B. Mm -hmm. So kind of, okay, I, I always go for the one that I want to get, of course. So, okay, I want to be able to get this period of time to be able to make all this. Oh, no, it's too much time. And you kind of know what it's coming from. So you can, okay, what about... Not two weeks. What about a week and a half? And mm -hmm. not three resources, just two. Because we wanted to do this and we promised. So you're going to, at least that you offer two options or three possible. Mm -hmm. So you you give the opportunity to the other part to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So you offer options and they make a decision. So it's not your decision that the end it is. But, but um, give the, the opportunity for them to feel empowered as well. Mm -hmm. Is this way or the freeway? No, is well, we had this way, but we can do this other way. I highly prefer the first way. And, and they can, okay, but you give them the opportunity to make a decision by themselves. So it's, it's good to have also this, analyze the situation, be able to listen what they, they bring to the table as well. And don't make, it's, it's easy to say, and it takes time, don't go to yourself and say, oh, this is the way or there is no other way. Because mm -hmm. you get that, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get mad, and you're going to block yourself. So just be open. Listen. So I think the biggest part is listen to be able to offer these solutions, these two solutions. And in that way, the other part, make a decision. What are the solutions? Now, they can make another proposition. But um, at least works for me, at least bring two, two options and push for the one that I really, really want. I really like that you mentioned listening, because if we don't listen, we don't know what the other person is expecting or really what they want. You're just trying to push what you think they want. And if you ask, most of the time, 
people they will say right they will say what they want what they are expecting or even like the problems they are having and with that we can have more empathy and we can find a solution together and something else that i learned and and it was a nice uh you know advice for my mom uh it was in the way that you ask is the way that you will receive Mm -hmm. If I go with all the attitude, hey, demanding, they're going to be defensive. And believe me, you won't receive. But if you go in a nice way, polite, nice, friendly, and ask for something, you're going to receive something in a mm -hmm. nice way as well. So mm -hmm. that works on everything, on everything. Be always nice. And in that way, also listen. But uh, I, I remember... When you go to situations, just have a conversation with somebody, you are empathy. I've been surprised on the results that I got. It's, it's like I, I, I never planned to have the result, but okay, thank you. Uh, one time I was traveling and it was a big issue at the airport in Mexico. It was crazy. It was literally, it was a lot of people. Something happened with the system. People was frustrated. People was, you can imagine. And, and so... When I, it was my turn, it was a long line. It was my turn to, to check in. And the person said, and I was, oh, uh, what's going on? Oh, the system was done for half an hour or something like that. Everybody, so obviously got affected. I was, oh, that's okay. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. It's work. Oh, yeah. Just kind of be empathy. Don't discriminate him. Be nice. And Is, is that okay? It happened in all the airports. You know, it's not just Mexico. It's been mm. a technical failure. It's everywhere. And he looked at me and said, oh, thank you for understanding. And by the way, you got updated to, upgraded to first class. And I was like, thank you. You know, it's just, it, it's funny how thinking in a nice way is the empathy mm -hmm. work in your, in, your, in your way without even planning. Mm -hmm. And I, I always say that just kind of, hey, really be nice, face off. Mm -hmm. And then I went up, and my dad, who took me to the airport, and was, what happened? I was, I don't know, but I was upgraded to first class. So, <laughs> ooh, no, lucky me. But yes, it's, it, it's nice. Just be empathy. Just believe me. Being mad, it doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. So yeah. Just take it easy, and, and it's going to be, everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I think kindness is another really important thing, as you said, that it's it's a mindset too that is definitely not easy but it pays off we have great learnings today the first one will be how technology can help the fight against cancer how cloud-based applications machine learning and algorithms can help during this process second the importance of negotiation skills, but also how communication is even more important to help you to learn how to negotiate and be better at it. And the third, negotiation is also about hearing people. This is so important and I feel a lot of times we don't talk about hearing, hearing people, learning how they feel, what they need and why they need it. So I want to thank you for sharing more about your journey, your story. It was really inspiring. I really like to see how you follow your dream. This is so important and really nice to hear. Thank you so much for being part of uh, another Latinx Empower episode. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. It was really nice to talk again with you. It was awesome to share that experience that we had last November, I think. And really, I'm, I'm so happy that there are people like you to bring these uh, experiences and, and bring all this story that inspire people. And I'm so, so grateful. Thank you very much. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. We have more interviews with amazing Latinx every first Tuesday of the month. Check our website, latinxempower.com to hear more. Don't forget to share comments and feedback always with kindness. See you soon.